Hi everyone, my name is Ross Anderson. I'm one of the urologists at Urology Nevada, and we're located in Reno, Nevada. This video will focus on the treatment of urethral strictures. Please check out my other videos on YouTube with part one, more of a what is a urethral stricture and what is the urethra, more basic information, as well as a question and answer format video about urethral strictures. A little bit of anatomy to start, as I often like to do with the urethra or the P-tube that empties the bladder, goes to the outside world. We're talking about urethral strictures in this video of the anterior urethra, and that's just an anatomic designation of the urethra that is further away from the sphincter or P-muscle. There are also scar tissue that involve the urethra of the external sphincter, the prostate, or even the bladder neck. And that won't be covered in this video series, as the more common strictures that we see are of the anterior urethra. Every urethral stricture is a little bit different, as well as every patient is different. And our treatment options are going to depend a lot about the location of the urethra, the length and severity of the stricture, your goals, as well as your health coming into a surgery. And the two main surgical subtypes are endoscopic or minimally invasive and surgical treatment or urethroplasty. A quick note about alternatives to surgery are things like self-catheterization or dilation. That would be passing a catheter yourself through the tip of the penis and breaking up that scar tissue on a somewhat regular basis. Sometimes we add steroids to the catheter, which can help prevent recurrence. There are some major drawbacks to this a little bit more old school technique, and those that, that do this often complain that it's quite painful to pass those catheters. This could be a lifelong thing with many catheters over the years, and this does increase the risk of urinary tract infection. You may have experienced an episode of urinary retention, and I wanted to put these pictures on here just to explain what a catheter is and the difference between a urethral catheter, one that goes from the tip of the penis into the bladder, or a suprapubic tube. Same type of catheter, but it goes above the pubic bone and into the top of the bladder. Both drain the bladder the same way, and both have similar infection rates. But the suprapubic tubes can be helpful when we're trying to allow the urethra to rest before we definitively treat it or do surgery. This can show us the true nature of the stricture, how long and how severe the scar tissue is if the patient has a suprapubic tube. Endoscopic or minimally invasive surgery using a small camera from within the urethra. So this is not cutting or no scalpel surgery. The two main options are to break up the scar or what we call dilation or cutting the scar from the inside or internal urethrotomy, often abbreviated as a DVIU. They both have pretty similar results. They can be done on an outpatient basis and usually a catheter is placed from anywhere between one and five days. And again, this is considered minimally invasive. Here's a picture of an internal cutting or DVIU, urethrotomy. The green tube looking thing is just a wire to make sure that we keep the lumen of the urethra. And then the metal object is a small knife that is used to cut the scar tissue. Let's talk about success rates long term for internal cutting. Unfortunately, they're not very good at about 8% long term. And patients tend to recur or have scar tissue reform in about seven months. So on average, five out of 10 patients who have this internal cutting would have scar tissue and symptoms return as early as seven months. Unfortunately, repeating a DVIU or internal cutting will have even lower success rates over time. So the drawbacks of endoscopic management include the low success, success rate. It can also increase the scar tissue length or thickness of the scar tissue, what we call fibrosis within the urethra. And it can lead to longer strictures or subsequently more complex repairs when we go to do the urethroplasty. 
urethroplasty is a surgical treatment. So this means cutting or making an incision usually behind the scrotum. And the basic tenets of this procedure are to cut the scar tissue out and then sew healthy urethral tissue to healthy urethral tissue. So the tube gets reformed with all healthy tissue. This also is usually an outpatient surgery, but the catheter does stay in for a little bit longer. As I described this initial urethroplasty, this is more of a simple repair, what we call an excision in primary anastomosis, where the two ends are brought back together. If the scar tissue is more complex or too long to be able to bring the two ends of the tube back together, we do what's called a graft procedure using the buccal mucosa. This is similar to doing a skin graft procedure, but we use the inside of the cheek. This is good for, like I said, longer strictures or urethral strictures within the penile urethra. In the upper left hand corner, the picture shows the inside of a man's cheek before harvesting buccal mucosa, and the lower picture shows the finished product after the graft has been harvested and the mouth has been closed with absorbable sutures. Why do we use it? It's because it's a good substitute for the urethral mucosa, it's used to a moist environment. It really takes well to the tissue around the urethra. The drawbacks are that it's quite painful. It's often worse than the urethroplasty incision itself. The cheeks are swollen. You can also have some long-term numbness of the cheek. And we often recommend a soft or liquid diet for the first few weeks because you're not going to want to do a lot of heavy chewing of solid foods. Let's talk about the success rates of urethroplasty. In this study, they looked inside the urethra after the repair, and based on a definition of anatomic success, meaning they could put a scope through the area of repair, 75% of men after buccal grafts were able to have anatomic success versus 86% for the more simple repair. When we ask men how are they doing with their symptoms, about 9 out of 10 men report functional success, meaning they're peeing just fine. Are patients satisfied with this repair? Yes, about 9 times out of 10. And 83% of men would do this surgery again. The dissatisfaction comes if there is urethral stricture recurrence, or if they have long-term pain, decreased sexual function, or they have some symptoms of urethral stricture that persist. There are a lot of benefits of urethroplasty. Most men will not need another procedure. So unlike DVIU or internal cutting that has an 8% success rate, this has nearly a 90% success rate, so most men won't need another procedure down the line because their urethral stricture is cured. This means no more catheters or suprapubic tubes. If men have pain with urination prior to stri stricture repair, that pain usually improves. The urinary symptoms that you have before urethroplasty also greatly improve. That's things like slow flow, getting up at night, frequency or urgency of urination. If you're unfortunate enough to have urinary tract infections that are associated with the strictures, these usually decrease or stop altogether after the repair. And for men that fear a future episode of urinary retention, this really takes away a lot of the anxiety that is associated with having a urethral stricture that hasn't been repaired. With any surgery, there are side effects of urethroplasty. So we have to talk about bleeding, bruising, urinary tract infections. There's small risk, usually less than 5% risk of erectile dysfunction or having a hard time maintaining or obtaining an erection. Curvature, or what we call core D with erections. Dribbling of urine is somewhat common, but usually men can learn to push out the last few drops of the urine. Perineal or scrotal numbness is relatively rare as well, but can be quite bothersome for some of the men that have this last longer than just the post-surgical pain. Fortunately, stricture recurrence is relatively rare. 
you would know if your urethral stricture came back because your symptoms would return that you had prior to the repair. When this does happen after a urethroplasty, we often try endoscopic management first, that means cutting or dilating, and lastly, we would repeat a urethroplasty. And if you've had a urethroplasty in the past, or if we need to do a repeat urethroplasty, the success rates of those urethroplasties are almost as high as your first urethroplasty, so also a good option. What is the most cost-effective way to manage urethral strictures? This fancy cost analysis paper looked at if a DVIU or internal cutting has a success rate of 35% or a third of men are cured, which like we've talked about in the previous slides, this is probably an overestimation of the success rate. But if you assume that a third of men are cured, then the most cost-effective management for a small urethral stricture, a short one, is one-time DVIU or one endoscopic procedure and then followed by a urethroplasty if it comes back. For longer strictures, the most cost-effective is to actually do a primary treatment of urethroplasty because those complex or long strictures have even lower success rate with endoscopic management or the cutting internally. So it's more cost-effective to do a urethroplasty up front. So in summary, I hope this video series was helpful to explain some of the treatments that we can offer. But again, every urethral stricture in every patient is different. Your options are going to depend a lot on where the stricture is, the length, how healthy you are, and how much you want to go through surgery, and what your goals are. Endoscopic management can be a good option, especially for first-time urethral stricture management or if you had a really good response to a DVIU in the past with many years of success, you may be a good candidate for repeating this procedure. But like we've talked about, it has a much lower success rate than a urethroplasty. So if you want a permanent cure, the highest rates of possible permanent cure, you're going to need to do the surgery. Most patients are satisfied after this procedure, and it is more cost-effective long-term than multiple internal cuttings or endoscopic management. The key to any surgery, including endoscopic management or for urethroplasty, is knowing what you're getting into. Being an informed patient is part of the consent process, and we want you to have realistic expectations of the common side effects but also the, the risks and benefits of this procedure. Thank you for your time and attention. Please come visit us at Urology Nevada. Here is our website information and our contact details. Thanks again for your time and attention. Mm -hmm.